This week, we are looking at The Night Watch by Rembrandt, a fabulous painting from Amsterdam, from the Rijksmuseum. It's his most famous painting. Uh, it made him the most famous painter in the Netherlands. And even though it's almost 380 years old, it still draws crowds of thousands of people to the museum every single day. And the good news is the museum reopened at the start of June. Fantastic. Okay, what we'll do then is we'll have a little look at the early life of Rembrandt and then we'll get straight on to the painting itself. So, Rembrandt is born in 1606 and he's born in a place called Leiden, which is about 45 minutes drive west of Amsterdam. He shows a great deal of talent uh, early on at art school and he is taught by uh, art teachers who they themselves are quite influenced by the um, Baroque style of painting which has originated from Rome. So we're talking about the followers of Caravaggio. Uh, it's clear though that Rembrandt has got an amazing amount of talent. As the picture that you can see now is, this is, uh, we're very lucky to have this painting in London. This is a self-portrait of Rembrandt something uh, he did hundreds and hundreds of self-portraits of himself drawings etchings to be made into prints and paintings too he does them uh, to try and study the different expressions on the human face so even though this one looks like he is well he's wearing fabulous clothes as we will see a detail in a second but He's trying to make himself look like one of the more famous artists in history. There are paintings by Raphael and Titian, very similar to this, but for sure he is their equal. At this stage in his life, he, he moved to Amsterdam in 1632, which isn't very far away. It's only, as I said, it's only 45 minutes drive today, so that would have been um, a day's travel 380 years ago. And he sets up shop in, in Amsterdam and almost immediately is earning good money. And the way that he makes money is from portraiture. And we can see that uh, this is a very typical painting of the sort of portrait that Rembrandt was doing when he first arrived in Amsterdam. Uh, this is the shipbuilder and his wife. And you can see straight away that it's uh, a far higher standard of portrait than uh, any of his contemporaries and that is why he was so busy when he first arrived in Amsterdam because everybody wanted their portrait painted by Rembrandt uh, so he had people sort of queuing up uh, for this. One curious aspect of Rembrandt's life is that he never travelled outside of the Netherlands so even though it looks like his paintings are sort of influenced by uh, Caravaggio he's often compared uh, in fact to Caravaggio um, he never did go outside of the Netherlands. But what did happen, though, is that many of the paintings uh, from Italy ended up in Amsterdam uh, at auctions and sales and all sorts of different ways uh, because Amsterdam was so wealthy with people who worked uh, in shipping. So there was lots of uh, cash money. So an example of this was um, a, an auction that occurred in April 1639, and we've already seen a brief image of it, but Rembrandt gets to see one of the greatest paintings in the world in Amsterdam on auction. And it's this wonderful painting right here. This is the portrait of Baldassare Castiglione by Raphael. This is painted in 1515, and uh, today it's in the Louvre. Certainly I regard it as um, one of the greatest paintings I've ever seen. But we can see directly the way that um, Raphael has influenced Rembrandt. So what we'll do now is we'll take a close-up, actually, of the self-portrait that we looked at before. And th this is a really interesting one because he painted this when he just established himself in Amsterdam. And he was 34 years old. He was already very famous. He was becoming pretty wealthy. But he definitely saw himself as the next great artist in history. Uh, and that's something, actually, uh, that I've already said. But 
if we look at the details here, for example, let's let's zoom in on the shirt if we can. Let's get a close up of that. Uh, it's just painted beautifully, and the uh, the wonderful shading on the face, which you're talking about, a picture of the very highest quality. So Amsterdam was uh, an amazing place to be during this time because, of course, the Dutch were in the middle of this uh, golden age in their history, and there were many uh, different militia groups in Amsterdam who were there to protect the city. Uh, the Netherlands had achieved independence from Spain uh, in about 1580 and initially those militia groups were very important because they protected the city from uh, all different forms of invasion uh, and, and fighting. But really by the 1630s the uh, the need for these militia groups had diminished to the point where they were little more than social clubs and uh, drinking clubs. And what we see then is uh, a huge amount of these people uh, were wishing their portrait to be drawn, sort of like a mass painting. And so here's an example of one of the militia groups having their, uh, their portrait drawn. We can see that it's a pretty dull-looking image and most likely it's probably mostly been forgotten. And so if we compare that with Rembrandt's Nightwatch that you can now see, we can see that it's radically different and in, in some ways cannot really be compared at all. Uh, but it is from the same period and the, the, the reasons, I suppose, are immediately obvious as to why the Nightwatch has retained its popularity and other pictures such as the pictures of the, what looked like the choir have been forgotten. So let's take a look at the painting in a bit more detail. Firstly, uh, it was started in 1640 and finished in 1642. So Rembrandt took ages over it. Um, but there are 34 different figures in the painting. So, and they're basically life-size because the picture, although from this image that you can see, it doesn't look that big, it is enormous. It's uh, almost 12 feet tall and it's 14 uh, feet across. However, it used to be a fair bit bigger and what happened to it is that it was moved actually from uh, the, the original location and it was moved to the town hall of Amsterdam in 1715 and to accommodate that space which was um, pretty tight. I think there were pi pictures all over these walls uh, four or five feet deep and what happened was is that it was cut down um, and there has been a copy made uh, by an artist called Gerrit Lundens which uh, is actually in the National Gallery in London and that's the image that you can now see on the screen so if we look over on the left you can see that there are a couple of figures that have been cut out of Rembrandt's painting in fact, uh, the painting has been cut on all sides, uh, a little bit on the right-hand side, some at the top, but crucially a little bit at the bottom too, which uh, creates a slightly unbalanced view of the Rembrandt painting today. Um, the picture also is not really called the Night Watch. Uh, the picture uh, it had acquired a great deal of uh, dirt and dust from the varnish that Rembrandt had put on it. He did experiment with varnishes, not all of which were effective. And so the Night Watch was a kind of nickname for the painting that it acquired in the 18th century. But the actual title of the picture is the Militia Company of District 2 under the command of Captain France Banning Cock. And he is the character... Uh, we can do a close-up of his image. He's the one with uh, with the gesture holding out his left hand with the red sash, uh, the much taller of the two. And the fellow on his right is his lieutenant, which is uh, Willem von Reitenbach, who's wearing this fabulous uh, yellow costume there. And we can see the various different um, uh, riflemen I suppose, behind the, and In fact, th these rifles are a kind of uh, old-fashioned gun called an arquebusier. Uh, we can see it's a, a lot longer than a modern-day rifle. And several of these guys behind them are holding these. Actually, one 
you can see a, a close-up of the image, one uh, of these rifles is actually going off. But not all of the people in the painting are riflemen. So what we can do, though, is take a look at all the different figures uh, in this painting. But one thing is clear before we do is the uh, beautiful lighting and arrangement of it. And it's so uh, alive and, and that there's real sort of action going on in, in a way that uh, the contemporary paintings of Rembrandt were nowhere near it. So uh, what we can do then is take a look at the figure on the right hand side. So before I zoom in we can look that, that there's a drummer uh, playing so we're going to zoom in on him now and there's a little detail to remind us that this is definitely an autograph painting by Rembrandt. So if you take a look at the uh, the drumstick there, just to the right of it, uh, we can see that R Rembrandt has altered the position of that drumstick. And you can only really see that by uh, zooming in uh, as we have done. It's not a detail you'd perhaps notice if you looked at the painting in the gallery. But this is a typical example of what we call pentimento, uh, where the artist has had a, a change of mind uh, to try and make a small adjustment to the picture. It's very common to see in paintings. Next, everybody, um, let's take a look at the uh, gesture by Captain France Banning Cock. And he's got his left hand uh, outstretched. But if we look at it, the, the, the way that Rembrandt has lit the picture, the reflection of his hand is on the jacket of Lieutenant Willem van Rysenbach. And if we zoom in now, we've got a detail which is wonderful because what his hand appears to be doing is supporting a lion. And a lion, of course, is the emblem of the city of Amsterdam. And see how beautifully this is painted. Now what we'll do, everybody, is we'll look at the figure of the girl who's just to the left of the captain. And she's beautifully lit up, like, of course, several different figures are. And she's interesting, really, because art historians are almost unanimous in the fact that their research has revealed that, there's, that, we, that they can't find any information on her. And so there's presumption that she is the mascot of the company of the militia. And let's zoom in on her because there's a couple of details that give us this clue. We can see first of all that there's actually a second girl stood to the left of her and that is not uh, really apparent if you're standing in the gallery. You've, you've got to, you'd have to have bionic eyes ready to, to, to work out that detail. But also the second girl appears to be boiling water so just to the right of the blonde haired girl, we can see some steam rising. and Maybe that's the reason why the blonde haired girl has turned her head. But if we take a look at what she's wearing on her belt, uh, then you can see for sure that there are a couple of examples of uh, the reasons why we think she's the mascot. So we can see clearly that she's got a uh, an upside down chicken on her belt, or maybe it's a cock. And that is a, it could be a, uh, a play on words, like a pun for the captain, but it's almost certainly a kind of emblem of the company. And also we can see uh, just to the left of that upside down chicken that she's got some kind of drinking gourd uh, attached to her belt. And that is also an emblem of the company. So that's the, that's the pr uh, presumption that we work on, that she's the mascot. There are a couple of other uh, very interesting figures to look at and quite brilliantly uh, Rembrandt has has painted himself in this painting and that's why we can't take the picture too seriously because it seems uh, like a great piece of comedy now if we zoom in on him and look at him. And uh, this is one of the reasons why the painting's so great. So here he is just uh, peeking over the shoulder of the ensign who's flying the flag. And he's clearly giggling, uh, and it's it's just really funny. So there he is, just with one eye looking over the shoulder there. Let's take a look at the image of the dog over on the right-hand side of the painting. If you can all see that, let's zoom in on the dog. The dog looks like a sort of ghost, 
And actually, that's uh, unfortunate because in this particular case, uh, the paint itself has faded away. And so that is why the dog uh, does look like a ghost. It's simply the fact that Rembrandt's original painting has, has faded out. Unfortunately, the painting has suffered a fair amount of abuse, which is unfortunately becoming quite common for the world's most famous paintings. The first episode of this was in January 1911, and it turns out 1911 was not a good year for the famous paintings of the world because that's also, of course, the year that Mona Lisa got stolen. But in this particular case, an attempt was made at slashing the painting with a knife. The image that you're looking at on screen now is uh, from 1975 when a lunatic took a bread knife to the painting and we can see that it's badly slashed in several places. And what happened to the painting at that point was that um, it was relined. So relined is when they glue a new piece of canvas onto the back of the old canvas uh, amongst other treatments that uh, the experts carried out so now although actually the marks on the paint you can still see the marks from that they've been disguised pretty well but and then the third one on the, sadly was in April 1990 when someone sprayed acid at the painting through a, a kind of pump action water gun like you water your plants with or something and in that case actually the museum staff responded very rapidly to it and threw bottles of water over the painting quickly. And in this case, the acid didn't go beyond even the varnish layer, so that was a huge relief. In 2019, the Rijksmuseum undertook a couple of projects to uh, understand the Night Watch a little bit better by photographing it in a great deal of detail. One of these projects was to understand uh, the components of the pigments that Rembrandt had used. And that technique is very similar to what NASA had used in the 1970s to analyze the different minerals on Mars uh, of their chemical composition. But also the uh, painting has been photographed to create an amazing image which is on the Rijksmuseum website now as of May 2020. And it's a 44 gigapixel photo of the painting. So you can zoom right in on the tiniest details. Uh, it's an extraordinary experience to look at the painting in this level of detail. The other one that I can think of which is similar would be Picasso's Guernica. And so the Reina Sofia uh, website in Madrid has got exactly the same. Uh, but this is a highly recommended activity. Um, I'd just like to finish by saying that uh, it, it is well worth uh, the effort to go to Amsterdam and go to their beautiful, recently refurbished museum. The Rijksmuseum underwent 10 years of refurbishment between 2003 and 2013. And the result is fantastic. And the Night Watch today holds its position as the most important painting in the museum. It has its own room. And uh, I, uh, a visit to it is unequivocally recommended for everybody. Thank you.